time. So before we start this video, I gotta get this mother humping thing out of the way. Mark Holmes is my daddy. Okay, that's out of the way. For Ow! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joku. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Thirsty Thursday as we are getting closer and closer to free agent frenzy beginning. Teams are beginning their work on getting up underneath the cap. We are literally seeing the Buffalo Bills gut the roster. Right now, currently on the Buffalo Bills, they have two players over the age of 30. Von Miller at 34, whose contract has been like an anchor around the neck of the team that has literally been dragging them under. And, of course, Stefan Diggs, who is 30 years of age. And they appear to be going for a youth movement. And I believe that Stefan Diggs may be a player that they look to see if they can do something with. Um, it's basically, you're going to be biting the bullet, and you're seeing a lot of teams that are biting the bullets and realizing that some of these big contracts that they've signed with people just are not working out. Von Miller is definitely one of those, Russell Wilson, who it doesn't really make sense to me that now you are, after basically saying, we are cutting this guy, that now you're saying, look for a trade partner. It would seem to be that you would say, find somebody to trade with, um, and then if that doesn't work out, we cut you. Because if I'm sitting here thinking I want Russell Wilson, why am I giving you any compensation to take him? I, I'm, I'm not looking at that. And if I'm Russell Wilson, I would rather you just cut me and me go to a team without having to lose any compensation that could be players that could help me be successful. And that's where I was saying about the same thing about Dak Prescott and if the Cowboys don't work out his deal. Saying, trade me. Well, if, if you trade me, then that means the team I'm going to is going to lose picks. Picks that ultimately could help me win a Super Bowl. So I would play out my contract and go where I want to and help them, so to speak, if you know what I mean. Now, the Cowboys, we are on the precipice. I think that's the right term. Precipice of being able to remake this team any way they want to. And by that, I mean... This is an opportunity because when you see Buffalo that is literally fire sailing and cutting people left and right, there are a lot of really good players out there that can help your roster. And as much as the Cowboys have heard about the culture and, and we the fans that have been kind of angry uh, about where we are, this, instead of being in denial and basically saying we don't have a culture problem, at least Jerry Jones says we have a run-stopping and running problem, this is the opportunity not to take this as you know criticism and things. Take this as a way of saying we can fix this and we can do better. Because as much as we like to think that Dak Prescott's contract has kept them from doing stuff, if you want to do things, you can do things. There's no if ands, or buts. And if we had gone through, and I, this is me speaking for myself. I can't say everybody else. If the Cowboys had gone through and they were swinging for the fences and they went out, they signed some players, and it ended up not working, and you know maybe they got to the NFC Championship game and then they had to turn around and get the roster, I think most of us would be okay with us trying to be great as opposed to just saying we are great. Now, again, as the Cowboys with the 16 free agents, we already know we've lost Tyron Smith. We've already known that. Um, we don't know how many of those we'll bring back. Maybe Stephon Gilmore. Uh, they've got probably time on him because he's recovering from the uh, surgery. Um, we hear that maybe Tony Pollard will be coming back. Um, Jordan Lewis is another one that they may be bringing back and so on. Other than that, I'm not sure that there's anybody else. So that's like 13 spaces right there that roster spots that are going to have to be refilled. And this is where instead of doing the same old, same old, 
maybe you look at getting more attitude and more guys that maybe have that dog in them. Now, Dalton Schultz yesterday kind of put in perspective one of the problems that he sees. Now, you could take this as he's just a disgruntled employee. He's mad because he didn't get paid and things like that. But don't deal with it from that standpoint because we've heard a lot of people say the same thing. Cole Beasley said the same thing, although he said Dak Prescott's the best quarterback he's ever played with. And he played with Josh Allen and briefly there with Tom Brady. But understand and think about how the Cowboys are. We are like, I've said it many times, we're like the rich kids. The spoiled rich kids that don't have to struggle to get crumbs. They've got everything. Now listen to Dalton Schultz here um, on his take of everything that is with the Cowboys situation. You know, from four wins yep. to go to the Super Bowl, there's been like a couple of those yeah. riddled throughout. And uh, for me as a Colts fan, that sucks. Yeah. You know, because I thought there was at least five, ten years here. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Jags trying, are trying one to of those teams too. Yeah, exactly. Jacksonville was able to figure it out. So the AFC South all of a sudden becomes a monster. And we're very thankful that you're going to be here for at least three more years on your, <laughs> on your new deal. But when you're talking about playing for the Houston Texans, you play for the Cowboys for five years. Right, you were there for five years. If our math is right on Wikipedia, it's always hard to do the time. <laughs> was it five seasons? Yeah. yeah, five. Okay, and I never played for the Cowboys. Pac-Man did play for the Cowboys, but we kind of get like displayed and showcased what it's like to play for the Cowboys. You're on national TV every single week. Practice facility is filled with you know people paying for tickets for practice. Like it's yeah. it's a whole different world. Yeah. Allegedly, yeah. have you no, enjoyed? Have, <clears throat> like obviously. You enjoyed your time in Dallas. I'm not going to say that. But, like, yeah. when you get to Houston, is it vastly different than your time in Dallas whenever you're talking yeah, about sure. all the off the field? Is it? Is that real? Is that yeah. Real? No, it, it's that was one of the first things that kind of stuck out to me is, like, it feels like much more – I don't want to say college because it's not. But, like, the focus is just – football you know what I mean and, and <laughs> going back and like telling some people like how kind of being around the Cowboys like practice facility and you know game day um, describing some of the interactions and stuff that you see on a day to day basis like surprise a lot of people they're like holy crap like that actually happens like at a practice facility and like you know it's just you think it's normal and then you come to a place like, like this what, like what like what you don't have to out anything but like what are you what? no dude it's just like you. there's people literally going on tours um, while you're listening in the weight room and they've got like a one way, they've got a one way mirror for people to like, look at, like, it's literally, it's a zoo, dude. <laughs> There's people <laughs> tapping on the glass, like trying to get people's attention as they're doing, you know, power cleans or whatnot. And it's just, it's different. And, and I mean, that's the brand that they've built. That's, you know, that's what Jerry Jones likes. That's the way they run things. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, you don't realize like how many, you know, eyeballs and how, how much that can maybe, you know, distract from, you know, stuff just in the locker room being in the facility until you go somewhere else and you're like, holy crap, like, dude, there's none of that. Like, this is, you know, also a really well-run um, organization in Houston. And I think that was one of the things that kind of scared me about, like, leaving Dallas the most is, like, I wasn't sure what another organization would kind of feel like. Mm -hmm. And, dude, I got here and it was like – this place is a well-oiled machine. Like it's, you know, coaching staff, the coaching changes. I can't speak to the previous stuff, but like the strength staff is phenomenal. The training staff is unbelievable. This has been the most like trainers that I've ever seen on a staff and they take really amazing care of the players. Um, the nutrition staff is phenomenal. The, the chefs, they like, they came in and they poached like five of the best chefs in the Houston area and they paid them a bunch more and they're like, come, you know, come hang out and cook for us. Smart. And so it's like everything that they kind of do is really top notch and, you know, not being sure of like how another organization would kind of be run leaving Dallas. Like I was so happy and like, no, so surprised. everything Arnold. you're saying is wrong. Remember Houston was a dumpster <laughs> fire. Oh yeah. Dude, Houston come was to a... Houston, baby. No, yeah, you need to <laughs> relax. Mean, you need to re that sounds amazing. That sounds like an NFL, like how it's supposed to be. These NFL yeah. BA report cards just no, came out. Yep.
And there's like some places getting like F minuses on facility. I assume there's some ownership learning about how their team feels about them, where they're like, oh, shit. We're in the middle of a dynasty run. I'm holding the Super Bowl first. You guys give me an F minus. Yeah. What the hell? What are we even talking about? I got a six bedroom suite in the stadium. Yeah. What are we, that's pretty cool. What are, that's cool. <laughs> it's like that, those things start happening. So, listening yeah. to you describe what Houston is, like, I think a lot of fans just automatically assume that's how it is everywhere. It's like, no, that is not how it is everywhere. Not that it isn't yeah. in Dallas. I Okay, so, see, instead of, here's what I would love to see, okay? And, and maybe this is happening behind closed doors and things, and we're trying to put a face on that, you know, everything is okay and so on. But deal with what you're hearing. Don't take it as an insult. Look at it as these are things that we need to do better. If there is a feeling of entitlement, why do we feel entitled when we're a team that hasn't won anything in 30 years? If there is too much, because I remember when the Cowboys opened the star up, they were having, uh, you know, where you could end up having fitness pass to be able to work out with the players that are rehabbing and so on that everything is about the sale and the access to the players and to the Cowboys. And maybe that this is hurting the Cowboys a lot more than we want to believe. That the money that you are making from doing all of the tours and being so open and having the players working out and basically, you know, you know come through and pump up the, 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 the uh, fans – that maybe this time is better spent on working on the product on the field. And that's where the Cowboys need to look at the culture. The culture is we are open for business and that the players, part of your job is to entertain. Are you not entertained when you come to Dallas? It's about the show. It's about the glitz and the glamour. And somewhere in there, the game is lost. The second part of this, which actually, when you listen to Get Up this morning, um, this was actually very, very important when you hear about the culture problem in Dallas. Um, when Amari Cooper, when Amari Cooper was traded away, I remember one of the themes that we all had as YouTubers and things is we said, we need some dogs. We need some dogs. We need some Charles Haley's types out there. We need some guys with some attitude. Now, don't get me wrong. CeeDee Lamb is an incredible talent, but he's not a dog. He doesn't have that dog in him, okay? A dog is going to come rushing at you no matter what. He's coming, you know, full teeth, ready to bite your leg off. CD. As he put it, you know, I got some growing up to do and things that I got to work on and so on. No disrespect to him. But you need those guys that can help to fire up others. You know, you need those guys that are like um, Larry Allen with an attitude and an edge that want to just take your head off. A, 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 a Gogan, you know, those offensive linemen that hate you that want to destroy you, a Charles Haley who will put a foot in his ass on his own teammates as soon as he would, as much as he would on the other team, that you look and say, you know what, I worry about this guy right here in the huddle with me more than I worry about them. A guy like Michael Irvin who is up in there, you know, making plays but also getting in people's faces. We need those kind of guys that when shit goes downhill – that we don't go into like a turtle shell. That we run into the breach and we turn shit around. Now listen to this because Lewis Riddick, you know, whether you like him or hate him or whatever, he is right about so much about the Cowboys. And, you know, we'll talk about not having the dogs. Kimberly Martin talks about us not having the dogs. And I agree, we need dogs. But Lewis Riddick is also like, look, the bottom line is, you can't have Marquez Bell, a 205-pound safety playing linebacker. That just is. And what we have to do, instead of us all just saying, you know, one thing, is we need to look at this whole picture holistically. And let's listen in, and I'll give you my final thoughts. With Dak Prescott and Stephen A. Smith. So all this conversation about the Cowboys and their culture problem, Dak was asked about it. His response drew a response from Stephen A. Just enjoy. 
the culture is high, honestly, and, and the culture is great from, from my from my standpoint. That's something I've always bragged on and took pride in. So if there's questions of that, questions, concerns on that, I feel attacked. I'm sure some guys in the locker room do. You damn right it's an attack against you because you should be better than you have been as a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys come postseason time, and you haven't been. And the fact that y'all can walk around with a straight face talk about there ain't no culture problems is evidence that there is a culture problem. <laughs> 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 You're damn right. You're damn right. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen. So Dak, and listen, he always says the right thing, and that's the right thing to say. But if I'm understanding that correctly, he feels attacked by people suggesting the Cowboys have a culture problem, but not by two of his highest profile teammates having their family members openly questioning him, his money, his leadership, and everything else. Yeah, I think, I think if you're a Dak Prescott, you're just going to go by the way that you're treated by your teammates. Mm. You're going to go by what happens when you're within the locker room, what happens when Michael Parsons gets on his podcast continually publicly to back Dak Prescott, Prescott, whether it's as a leader or whether it's as an MVP candidate. And I think that's what Dak is focusing on. Also, when you're talking about a culture, yes, this team hasn't won playoff games. But they've been a team that in the regular season has shown that they could be one of the tops in the NFC. And so I think Dak Prescott is speaking from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. What they have is an entitlement problem. What does when, that mean? What's the difference? When things do go, start problem. going well, they think that this is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. This is what we deserve. This is going to keep happening no matter how I go to work, no matter how I practice, no matter how mm -hmm. I show up to the stadium, no matter how I prepare. Because in the offseason, Greeny talked about us every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> During the season, Kmart had to report on us constantly. Mm -hmm. Lewis Riddick had to talk about the moves that we were making to make our team better and they start to feel themselves. It's not that they don't have they a culture themselves. that can foster winning. It's that they have an entitlement that can't foster hmm. consistency in the biggest moments. See, I actually think they have a dog mm. problem. They are a very good team, but when you talk about winning culture, you can't tell me we have a winning culture, do well in the regular season, but then when the postseason comes, you wilt under pressure. You can't have an MVP caliber season, get congratulated for it, and then when the playoffs come, come up small. You can't consistently talk about why are people talking about us, bad-mouthing us, and consistently come up short. Mm. Like, when the playoffs come, like, that's when we see dogs. And I think they don't have enough of that right now. Lewis. Mm. The Cowboys have a personnel problem, all right? Look, there, there are certain cracks in this foundation, in this football team, in this roster that show up during the regular season, too, despite the fact that they're winning 12 and 13 games, that you know if they run up against a certain profile of team, yeah. I don't care how many dogs they got. I don't care how much they like each other. I don't care who's talking about who, whose wife, whose mom, whose family members talking about who. There are certain things you can't do. When a team comes out in 12 personnel and you got 205-pound linebackers on the football field, I don't care how much you want to get off that block, mm -hmm. how much you want to fill that hole, yeah. you aren't going to be able to fill that hole. And when teams f identify that and start pressing on that weak point, it's, it, it goes from being a little bit of a crack in the foundation to the foundation just crumbles. And then they can't do nothing about it. So to me, you know, look, Culture, culture ain't stopping the team on third and short. Culture ain't uh, is not stopping the wide zone or the inside zone. That, what, what, what is stopping that are linebackers who are bigger, defensive tackles who can get off blocks. Because we've all been on teams, we've all been a part of teams where it hasn't been always perfect. There's somebody over in the corner talking about somebody else, somebody's family member who doesn't like somebody else. You don't get along with the coach. They have a personnel problem. And they better fix it. Otherwise, they're That's gonna true. keep getting knocked out yeah. of the playoffs. All right, I love it. Right, let me hear, let me do. There you go. And see, here's what the Cowboys need to do is we need to work on all three of those areas to get to a Super Bowl. But it's not rocket science, okay? We know that you cannot be a run-stopping defense with a safety at 205 pounds playing linebacker. You've got to get that on uh, together. We know that Micah Parsons, as the only real weapon on the defensive front, is not enough. You have got to get some guys that can be stout in the middle and another guy on the other side that can get constant pressure. Okay? That's another issue. You need to have a running game. 
Tony Pollard by himself is not good enough. And you need to be able to protect your quarterback and open up some holes, which means you need to fix your offensive line. Next thing, you need some guys that don't wilt under pressure. Some guys with some attitude and some edge. Not this kumbaya moment. You need somebody that's up here, well, this, and let's go. And you need to get the focus more on the play on the field than trying to sell everything. The Cowboys are so far ahead, so far ahead of everybody else's value. Jerry, you could go through and say, you know what? We're going to re- reduce the amount of tours that we're going to sell at the Star this year. We're going to cut down the amount of open practices that we have. We could do this for a year or two, and it's still not good. The other teams ain't going to catch up. The other teams aren't going to catch up and say, we're really going to focus in on this being football and really go all in on doing so. And this is what we have to understand. What all in isn't only about the players, okay, about going out and bringing in all these players. All in is about how the organization treats the team and getting that win. All in is we're going to focus and give Mike McCarthy everything that he needs to be successful. We are going to go all in to make sure that the players have the best facilities that that they can focus in on just working out instead of entertaining the fans. All in is we're going to slow our roll with all the media stuff and and things here, the circus that is, and we're going to let the coaches coach the game plan and let them put out what they want to be known. All in is going through and just doing your deals getting the contract signed, and then announcing it's done. That's what all in is, and this is how the Cowboys need to look at the whole picture of everything that they do holistically to make a difference. And that's the bottom line. You can blame the quarterback and say he's not enough. Well, you know what? It's going to be interesting to see now that the Buffalo Bills have gutted their roster that they've gutted their roster. It'll be interesting to see how well Josh Allen does this year because they always tell you it's just about the quarterback. So I expect the Buffalo Bills to be in the Super Bowl because Josh Allen is so great. All right, good people, that's all I have to say about that, and I will see you guys soon. Peace out.